Yeshoda. Welcome to this uh, special edition of uh, the YES project program on the occasion of the International Day of Yoga. Now, if uh, any of you were to ask me what yoga is, and I reply that yoga is a set of asanas, which are good for health, perhaps uh, your response would be very true, but somehow this definition uh, uh, doesn't look impressive, doesn't make uh, yoga look very respectable. And uh, as uh, in case of any insipid dish, if one were to sprinkle it with uh, some salt and pepper, it would be much better. And in this case, what I can do is to sprinkle it with the words like uh, God or the divine and consciousness and union and uh, spiritual growth and progress and so on and so forth. And uh, then you would say, yes, now it does look a little impressive and uh, uh, doesn't matter even if I don't understand all those terms, but uh, the definition will look spiced up. Now, what it means is that uh, in the heart of our hearts, we equate yoga with the asanas, and yet we feel there's something more to it, but that we consider is not very important. And that's just sort of to make it look more impressive, more respectable, more deep, and uh, to impress rather than to talk about how, uh, think in terms of how it can make yoga something much greater and of much greater value to humanity. Now, if uh, further, uh, I were to say that, how about uh, telling it to a child? A child, say, as young as three. Then you would say that, well, for a child young, as young as three, it's okay to even if the child equates it with the asanas, because the child has to be told something and is very simple. And bringing in things like uh, union and God and so on and so forth uh, and consciousness uh, will only confuse the child. It will be ridiculous. And I would agree. But all the same, if uh, the child grows up with the impression that uh, yoga is to be equated with asanas, the child may continue to do so throughout life, as most of the people all over the world do, and uh, don't even realize that it's an error, although it's an error, because if everybody does it, it doesn't even look like an error. So what I will do is uh, to try and make an attempt to show how, without using any such high-flown, difficult words, we can bring home this fact that yoga is much more than the asanas. And at the end of the session, if I forget to tell it, you remind me why that is important, even in case of a child. Okay. So the effort will be made through a story, which is uh, one of the two stories in this book. The book is titled One Book, Two Stories. And this is the first out of the two stories in this book. And uh, I'll, for that, uh, give you a little visual aid in the form of uh, the slides. So I'll go to slide share, screen share. So the story is, uh, Deepa knows three yogas. And Deepa is a four-year-old girl. Uh, she has a younger brother, Deepak. Deepak is two. The family lives in Delhi. When Deepak was born, Deepa called him baby. She still calls him baby. The nicknames, you know, have a way of uh, surviving beyond their utility. When Deepa, Deepak and their parents sit down to eat, Deepa eats on her own. Deepak also tries to eat on his own, but cannot. Very typical of a two-year-old. Those of you who have seen two-year-olds, they want to do everything on their own. And uh, even if they make a mess while eating, they still want to do it themselves. And that's how they learn to eat and do everything. Uh, anyway, so he needs help from mommy or papa to eat. He does not like it when they try to feed him. Now the elder sister steps in. Deepa tells Deepak, I'm big. I can eat on my own, baby. You are little, let mommy feed you. And uh, the elder sister is not just bossy, she's also very loving. Then to reassure him, she says, Doctor, baby, lucky. baby yeah. when you will grow up, you'll also eat on your own.
So she tells the uh, younger brother, baby, when you will grow up, you will also eat on your own. One day, mommy said to Deepa and Deepak, we'll go to see your grandparents. They live in Mumbai. Deepak asked, where is Mumbai? Mumbai is very far, said mommy. Then I'll go in your lap, said Deepak. Deepak thought, oh my God. And uh, she told uh, Deepak, silly baby, Mumbai is very far. Nobody can walk up to Mumbai. We'll go there by train. Now the day has come when the family is going to Mumbai by train. The train ride was fun, especially for the kids. Now they are with their grandparents. The grandparents were very happy to see them. They loved Deepa and Deepak very much. All grandparents do. The grandmother made delicious sweets for them. Deepa asked mommy, why don't you make such sweets? Mommy said, I learned them this time from mommy. Deepa said to her grandmother, whom she called Nani, Nani, please teach your daughter to make some good sweets. Deepa and Deepak's grandparents got up early in the morning. They spread mats on the floor. Deepa and Deepak peeped in and saw them lying down on the mat. Then the grandparents started making some funny movements. Deepa went and asked mommy, what are Nanu and Nani doing? Mommy said, they are doing yoga. Deepak made some movements and said, yoga, yoga. Deepa shouted, mommy, mommy, see baby is doing yoga. And then she said, I can also do yoga and started copying Deepak. The grandparents did yoga every day. Deepa and Deepak started watching them carefully and soon started copying some of their movements. Deepa could do many things that the grandparents did and enjoyed it. In fact, this is the best way to uh, teach uh, these postures to the children. Uh, they don't need any warm up. And many of the postures are instinctive for them. And uh, they can do it any which way. Their bodies are so flexible, they not hurt themselves. And uh, in fact, I've seen it with my grandchildren. I started showing it to them without saying anything while they were still in the crib. Hadn't even learned to sit and walk. But they can watch. So they are in the crib. And if they're awake early in the morning, they watch you doing something. By the time they are two, they start copying you. And they start calling it, I'm also doing yoga. Let them do it any which way, but they start doing it. The result is that they grow up with the idea that this type of movements done early in the morning is as much a part of the daily routine, the dincharya, as uh, uh, bathing or cleaning your teeth, or for that matter, uh, everything else that we do, like eating and sleeping. This is a part of life. And this is the best way to do it. And this is in keeping with what Sri Aurobindo you know, has called the first principle of teaching, nothing can be taught. The student learns only if the student wants to learn. The children want to learn. They are curious. They are thirsty for knowledge. And uh, you don't have to tell them anything. Much of this is within them and it just comes out. It has to be brought out by providing the right environment. And nothing perhaps can illustrate it better than these yogic postures. Deepa could do everything that uh, Deepak did and enjoyed it. Deepa could also do a few difficult postures that Nanu and Nani did, but Deepak could not. When she did them, she told Deepak, you cannot do this because you are little. When you grow up, you'll also be able to do it. Mommy said, don't call him little. He is small, not little. Deepa said, oh, mommy, it's the same thing. One evening, Deepa saw her Nanu and Nani sitting quietly with the eyes closed. She knew they were not to be disturbed. She came quietly and whispered to mommy, what are Nanu and Nani doing? Why have they closed their eyes? Mommy replied, they're meditating. That is also yoga. And you know, the second question that Deepa had asked was, why have they closed their eyes? They have closed their eyes so that they can hear better. When the eyes are open, 
we see more than we hear. When the eyes are closed, we do not see anything and therefore we can hear better. Deepa asked, what are they trying to hear? Mummy replied, they are trying to listen to God. Now here, the teacher or the parent can interrupt the story and go in for a bit of uh, reflection with the children. Uh, the mother has explained that they are trying to listen to God. Ask the children, have, have you ever listened to God? Now this may look like a strange question to be put to children, but there are always a few children in a large group, and this is particularly therefore relevant for teachers who have unique psychic abilities. There's a teacher, James Peterson in California, who has done school teaching for more than 45 years. And uh, pretty early in his career, he realized that some children have special psychic abilities. And based on his observations on those children, he went on to write a book called The Inner World of Children. So you'll always have a few children who may come up with things like they have listened to God, God has spoken to them, and what God has spoken to them. And the other children may also find that interesting to listen to. Then you can ask a simpler question. Have you ever spoken to God? In which language do you think we should speak to God? And the children will, that's a very simple question. The God understands all languages. And uh, when you speak to God, what do you say? We pray. And uh, what do you pray for? Children will say this, that, and so on. Does God answer all the prayers? No, not always. And then you ask them, why doesn't God answer all our prayers? And you'll find amazing answers coming out from children. Like, uh, God doesn't want us to be greedy. God knows what is best for us and therefore will not give us something which is, may not be good for us. And so on. And these are uh, answers that I've got from seven or eight-year-old children. And uh, this can be good reflection. And then you can uh, ask them that do we have to, when we are talking to God in a prayer, do we always have to ask for something? And uh, this is again an important reflection because we don't have to ask for something in prayer. We can just thank God. We can say, thank you, God. We can admire and appreciate God. And we can admire and appreciate God in everything around us, in everything that we see especially the human beings, but not only the human beings. And uh, this is something that the children can, again, understand. If you say that, well, uh, are you afraid of dogs? Are you afraid of lizards? You know, some children would be. Uh, when you see one, a dog or a lizard, just see God in that creature and tell it, I love you. When you say, I love you, I love God in you. I love you. Please don't bite me. And this is something which can be done even with a wasp which everybody is afraid of. But it's beautiful, it's a wasp is a very beautiful creature, a golden hue, and that anybody can appreciate. So tell the children, if next time you see a wasp hovering around you, don't be frightened, just look at the wasp and uh, tell it, I love you, but please don't bite me, and it won't bite you. And the interesting thing is, most of the time it works. It works because uh, the God in you can talk to the God in the wasp, and therefore all languages are understood, and uh, therefore the wasp also reciprocates. The wasp is not keen to bite us, it bites us because, of, because it's a sense of self-preservation, it wants to protect itself, it's frightened. Once you put the wasp at ease, the wasp is also uh, not likely to bite. So these are things you know, which can come out in a reflection. Uh, in the conversation can go this way, that way. You know, uh, let it take its own course, and the teacher has to be prepared for that. But uh, this can be a good point to uh, break the story, interrupt the story, and engineer this type of a reflection. Now, coming back to the story, this was a bit of a digression. Now, here are grandparents meditating. and. Uh, the mother has told them that this meditation is also yoga. Now Deepa asked mommy, why don't you also do yoga? Mommy replied, I used to do all this, but now there's no time. Sometimes you want me, sometimes baby wants me. I'll start it again after you're both a little grown up. Then I'll do it with both of you. Deepa said, mommy, I'm so sorry. We stopped you from doing yoga. 
Mummy said, no, you really don't. Now this is my yoga, said she as she hugged both Deepa and Deepak tightly. Deepa and Deepak were very happy to get the hug. But Deepa asked, how can this be yoga? Mummy said, yoga takes us closer to God. I see God in you and Deepak. That's why when I hug you, I feel closer to God. Deepa ran to her father and said, Papa, mommy has taught me what yoga is. Now I know this is yoga. And after a while she said, this is also yoga. And after a while she said, and this is also yoga. Now here's a question for the children. Which of these is not yoga? A multiple choice question. And uh, doesn't have to stop there. You can create a skit which the children can enact. And uh, you can create a game. Uh, the game goes something like this. You know, you might have seen those uh, games uh, in which you know, children stand in a circle and you tell them to do something and they do it. So here in this case, you know, we uh, name these three things that we have called yoga. Yoga number one, yoga number two, yoga number three. Make the children stand in a circle and say yoga one, yoga two, yoga one, yoga two, you know, uh, not that fast, but uh, slowly enough for them to actually do uh, what you say. So when you say yoga one, they do some posture. When you say yoga two, they sit down to meditate. And you do that eight or 10 times, yoga one, yoga two, yoga one, yoga two. And uh, then the expectation builds up. Before you even said it, the child knows that uh, now that uh, the teacher has said two, next she'll say one and they're almost doing one already. And then you come up with a surprise. And then you see yoga three. And then what the children are supposed to do is to hug the child next to them. And uh, since all the children will not be equally alert, those who are not alert, they go out of the circle. And finally, in this process, you'll be left with just one child, the winner. So it becomes a game. But suppose you are a parent with just one child in front of you, then you know one can, what one can do is just modify the game. Uh, say these three numbers in, random in a random sequence and uh, let the child be just alert and do what is, uh, uh, whatever that is. So say, keep saying all the three in random sequence and the child is always very eager for you to say yoga number three. So it becomes a game. And uh, of course you can use your own ingenuity to come up with more and more ideas of, how to use this story and how to create more stories which can give a wider dimension of yoga to children. Now, finally, the question arises, as I told you, you must remind me if I forget, why is it important to bring out this wider dimension of yoga to children? Yoga was something which was not devised for good health. It was something devised for spiritual growth, to have better people, to make a better world. That is what yoga was for, designed for. And these are aims that uh, never become obsolete. There's always room for further Im improvement in the world. And in fact, that is uh, the mission of Sri Aurobindo and the mother to raise the consciousness of the human race so that uh, instead of the world being driven by uh, ego-driven personalities, we have a sufficiently large number of love-driven people, which in fact is what will wipe out the problems of human existence. And that is what will give us a better world. And that is a far more important uh, aim than just getting good health. Health is a fringe benefit, an important fringe benefit, but a fringe benefit, a side effect of yoga. That is not the aim of yoga. And uh, therefore, for the world to just feel that, uh, the, uh, that yoga is basically a set of postures for good health and the rest is just icing on the cake, it's a vast body of knowledge which is there in the scriptures. And, uh, but somehow that vast body of literature is basically knowledge, but it has no relationship to yoga in practice. It has no relation to real life is something which uh, we have to take care of, wipe out. And the earlier we do it, the better. Because a child who grows up with this wider dimension of yoga is unlikely to equate yoga with the postures for the rest of its life. That is what is important. This story forms a part of this book, one book, two stories. The other story in this, Anita deals with a quarrel, is also related to yoga. That is about 
we being not the doers, but just instruments of the divine for whatever we do. That's the other important aspect of yoga that the second story brings out. But that's for a little older children, maybe at least five. And even Deepa knows three yogas. A three-year-old can understand, but if the child is five or six years, the child will get more from it. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, any questions or comments? And besides that, if as a parent or a teacher, you want these slides, we'll be happy to mail the whole set to you. Uh, just drop an email to yes at yesspirituality.com. And uh, I'll be back with you again on Saturday uh, to continue with the last in the series on uh, pioneers in mind-body medicine. Uh, this Saturday on the 25th of June at six in the evening, Indian Standard Time, we'll talk about Dr. Larry Dossey, uh, a medical doctor who has brought to the forefront the role that prayer can play in healing. Thanks to the Mother and Sri Aurobindo for uh, making these sessions possible. And thank you all for being there. Any questions or comments? Aditi, are there any questions in the chat? No, not yet. No, no questions in the chat, no comments? So if there are no questions or comments, and then- uh, uh, Sir, okay. Uh, okay. this is uh, Dr. Manoj speaking. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, I was with my kid to trying to attend this uh, session actually. He did not allow me uh, fully to participate and it was a really family session with my wife uh, was listening to the story. And it was very interesting to make the entire spectrum of yoga to be made available to children, sir. And uh, I am a student of medicine when I, when I first heard of you, sir. Uh, and uh, it was uh, nice to listen to you uh, telling a story to my kid, actually. And uh, I would love to actually practice. We usually do Surya Namaskar daily morning. And uh, for him, as you said uh, wrongly, maybe it got imprinted in his mind that yoga is uh, uh, doing uh, these asanas. So hereafter, I would like to follow the practice of sitting, meditating that I do already. But uh, more that hug. that is like Munabai MBB is doing uh, Jaduki Chappi. <laughs> so that you reminded. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Manoj. Uh, I can see Rakesh stand up. Hi, good evening, sir. This is the first time that uh, I have joined one of your programs. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, great. Mm, so I'm really thankful for the wonderful wisdom that you have shared. Uh, I have a six-year-old and I have been asking, my wife is a yoga trainer, so I've been asking her to uh, teach those yogas to my daughter since she was two-year-old. But today you gave me a wonderful understanding that yoga is not just about the asanas, it is also about meditation and it is also about uh, actually hugging and sharing your love and expressing and seeing God in everything. So this was a wonderful learning opportunity. And I am also looking forward for the next program that you talked about on Saturday, which was about prayer prayers, because I do believe there are a lot in prayer and God. So thank you. Thank you so much for uh, this wonderful session, sir. I'm really grateful to you. Thank you. Thank you, Rakesh, for your comments. That's very encouraging. I can see my friend Marcelo there. Do you want to say anything? Hi, everybody. Namaste. Is, is my audio okay? Yes, okay. 
Now I was I was just uh, writing here, thanking for this opportunity. Here in Argentina is uh, is early morning, so sometimes it's not that easy to to be in touch. But wonderful to be here. Um, just that, uh, just to say that, thank uh, Ramesh and everybody for doing all these uh, meetings and uh, uh, it's, I'm really very, very much connected with this, um, this approach to, uh, of yoga to children. Uh, I'm very much in tune with that. So um, I will be here uh, always. So thank you again. Uh, Ramesh, um, Aditi, and everybody. Namaste. Thank you. And apart from all the adult students that you have, now you have a child at home, maximum. Huh? You can practice it on maximum. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. I'm, do I'm doing that slowly, slowly. He's, uh, he's doing uh, three years old um uh, in two months so i'm trying to apply everything and uh, have every day many so many opportunities uh and i i have to say that uh i'm learning more than before with him <laughs> about yoga yeah yes children are great teachers make us put yoga into practice <clears throat> Any more questions or comments? So if there are no more questions or comments, then uh, we can close this session and uh, hope to see you again on Saturday. And those of you who can't join, we promptly put all these uh, recordings on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, Yes Spirituality YouTube channel. <clears throat>